Oh, hey guys. I didn't see you there. Well, I guess you know what we're doing. Yep. These old lead acid batteries have had it. But we're going to do the simplest installation of a lithium battery changeover with hardly anything else. Now, we're going to be sure to be detailed where we need to, but also make this as simple as possible. This is a 36 volt cart. Most of your golf carts are either 36 volt or 48 volt. This is a 36 volt. We're going to be putting in two 36 volt batteries, so they will be in parallel. We're not making it 72 volts. Uh, it'll be 36 volts, but just longer run time with two batteries. We're also going to be installing the charger. Let's get these unboxed. We'll fast forward through most of it unless some, something looks uh, peculiar to it. Peculiar. Unless something looks important, and then we'll slow down. So here are the two 36 volt batteries. You can see it says 38.4 volts, but again, 36 volt batteries. Uh, both of these are 100 amp hours, so we should get 200 amp hours of capacity out of these carts at 36 volts. Uh, here's the service cards for each one of them. I'm sure warranty stuff, everything else is in there. Probably some how-to stuff, some probably more not-to-do stuff. And then you get a card, a product manual with the charger as well. Uh, the charger is a 43.8 volt charger, but that will charge your... Uh, your 36 volt batteries, also screws and nuts and bolts to install those, and as well as uh, the bolts for the batteries as well, comes with those. We may have to do a little wiring, but again, we're gonna do as little as possible. Now, what's the benefits of a lithium battery? There's a couple. Number one, there's typically more output uh, on these, being able to basically get more speed out of your cart, more power out of your cart, Typically not a whole bunch. You, you will see a little seat of the pants uh, punch and maybe even a little more top speed, but more so in the lightness. So this is going to be a much lighter battery, even both of these batteries compared to the lead acid batteries that are in here. And of course, longevity. You know, we should be able to get thousands of recharges out of these and should be pretty simple as well. Should be just basically plug in an extension cord, which turns on that charger and it handles uh, charging both of these and kind of set it and forget it. And then also runtime. Again, we probably got about 100 amp hours of batteries in there. We'll check that once we pull them out, uh, but we're going with double that now. So lighter, more capacity, so longer runtime, and more speed and power. Now, I'm not going to be dealing with this seat sitting here all day, so let's go ahead and get the seat out of there and then get started on removing these batteries. So you can see here we have a one, two, three, four, five, six, six volt batteries. Uh, they're all wire wired in series, so that's giving us 36 volts. These things are completely dead. Uh, we'll put a multimeter on here in a moment. But what I want to do first, you can see, I believe this is like the radio. So the power wire is going to this post. The negative's there. Uh, this is the positive post going to the motor. But then uh, there's another positive post being used somewhere else. So I'm going to go ahead and mark all of these wires because you can see like this one here, that's the positive wire, but yet it's black. So I'm just going to put us a red dot on here, just so there's no question whatsoever what is power and what is not. Of course, the red wires, I don't think I need to worry about. But I'll mark them anyway. Now, something else to note is this red wire right here on this charger that comes across here and hooks up there. I believe that's a signal wire, and we will talk about that here in a moment, even though we can probably remove... Uh, this charging port, uh, that's going to be important. We'll probably have to power that here soon. But let's get these batteries out. Let's first get a voltage reading on this because the lights will not even light up on this. There's our positive. There's our negative. Yeah, 1.5, 1.48 volts on this entire system. So I would say it's run pretty dead. Okay, this is pretty typical. Uh, a little bit of corrosion there under the batteries. Actually, typically, is it's a lot worse than that. The, everything's nice and solid. We may have to cut out uh, those battery holders. We'll see how the configuration of the lithium batteries work out, but we may have to cut those flush and fill, up, fill that in with some wood or something else. But uh, 
Anyway, we'll get this cleaned up, maybe even put some black paint on it, and then we'll get started with the batteries. Now, here's the question. What is the weight difference? Because these things... Sixty... 63 pounds, 62 pounds, 15 and a half ounces. We're gonna call that 63 pounds. And there's six of those, so six times 60, 360 and 18, that's 378 pounds. So let's just call that 380 pounds. Wow, that's a lot of weight. So one of these weighs about as much as one of the batteries. So 62 pounds, three ounces, two of those, 124 pounds and six ounces. So less than 125 pounds versus almost 400 pounds. So these existing stands here are gonna to have to come off. They're gonna get in the way of the new batteries. Now this charging port, we're not going to use anymore. However, I do want to save this red wire, so I'll take the uh, zip ties off the wire loom. But I don't need the charging cables other, ne other than that red wire. I also need to get rid of this port. I don't want to drill out uh, the rivets. I'm going to try something different. This is actually an internal PVC cutter. So like if your toilet breaks off the flange, you can go in there. You can trim out the PVC anyway. So it's made to do that. I'm going to try to go from the inside, cut this piece out. Now I'm going to mount the charger. Now I did find a hole. There's a bunch of holes here in this plate that it would go in. I had to drill one hole. Uh, other than that, we're good. So we're going to mount this with the screws, that, nuts and bolts it came with. I did put some blue Loctite on them to make sure they don't come loose. And it does have a cooling fan and heat sink here on the top. So really mounting this anywhere you have a little bit of air around it will be the best. And we'll go ahead and set the batteries in here. As you see, they sit right in the footprint of the old ones as long as those braces are cut out. Now, I will have to fill that in with maybe a piece of wood, something like that, that I'll cut. And then I believe I'm going to offset the other one. In fact, great. We'll put a strap over there that will secure those. Now let's get this wired up. All right, we've got our jumper wires made up that are going to cross over. And let's get these plugs out of here. So remember, we're going positive to positive because we're keeping it 36 volts. All right, so the jumper wires are on. So this is the negative for the motor or the speed controller. Positive for the speed controller. We're going to wait on this signal wire. This is the charger. So I'm going to go, actually, I'm removing the radio and the lights because those need to be stepped down to... 12 volts and we'll just put a wire up the charger and the speed controller and 39.6 volts so it looks like it's charged all the way up so we've got everything wired up I have the key on, I have it in forward, but I do not have the signal wire attached. Now I'm gonna push the accelerator, I get nothing. We put it in reverse, I get nothing. Kill the key. Now that the signal wire is on, key on, 
Forward works. Reverse works. So you got to make sure the signal wire is attached to the positive lead in order for it to work. Okay, so we're wrapped up as far as high voltage goes. The, the motor works, the switch works for forward and reverse. Of course, the gas pedal works, brakes, all that works. As far as electronics, as far as the drive system, everything works. What we have not hooked up, what we have zip tied right here, are any 12 volt sources such as your lights, as well as maybe any radios or, or any auxiliary stuff like you have that. You can't hook that up to 36 volts. You'll blow something. So we'll have an inverter. We'll hook that up. The charger is here. It's hooked up. The, the hole here will also put a nice plug in there for actually charging it. But for now, this plug can go out this hole or you can stick it an extension cord through this hole and plug it in here. And then that will charge your batteries. That's all hooked up. Now, right now we have a big rectangle hole here, a big square hole. And we want to put this NOCO 15 amp plug in its place. And what this does is enables you to just stick a extension cord in there. And then that's a nice sealed connection there that'll go on the face of that. And then you can just uh, plug the, the actual charger into this. And then the only thing you have to do to charge this thing is lift this cover, plug your extension cord in. We have a nice finished look to it, but we won't have to cover up what's already there, which is a big kind of obtuse uh, rectangle hole. So what I'm going to do, I drilled a two inch hole with my hole saw into a piece of wood. We're going to clamp this wood on the face of this. That enables me to basically get this hole saw started into this square hole and be able to drill it all the way through. And then this will totally cover whatever opening is there, I think, and we'll find out. And then we can run our screws, drill it and run our screws in and be done. It looks like this is going to cover up. It includes drill tip screws with the NOCO, but I'm going to go ahead and pre-drill with a smaller bit. And now it's near perfect. Lift that up, plug it in. Now I know some of you are going to say that my screws are crooked. I did it on purpose because if I had to line those up, the actual holes where the uh, that obtuse rectangle was would it would have been open, not be able to dr drill through. So I'm perfectly fine with that being a little bit crooked and utilizing this existing plate that's there. Well, now that we know everything runs, everything works uh, as far as the drivability, we're going to go ahead and hook up our 12 volt electronics, such as our lights, stereos, anything uh, accessories like that that runs on 12 volts. And what I have here is a 36 volt. Uh, step down to a 12 volt converter. So basically it's a DC to DC converter converting the 36 volts or 40 is uh, 36 or 48 and it steps it down to 12 volts. I've also added a, a fuse block here that I can tie in on my uh, ground as well as my positives and have fusible items here. So that's just extra layer of protection. I've gone ahead and terminated the wire ends on my, uh, I believe this is the stereo lead and on the lights leads as well. So I'll go ahead and uh, shrink this heat shrink and then get it tied into this and get this mounted. So on the inverter, you're gonna take the thin black wire and I'm tying it with the charger that's already, we've already wired up. So it's a thin black wire for the ground, but it's the thick red wire for the positive. And again, tying it in with the positive with the charger. And so basically all you're doing is tying your positive leads to the fusible links here on the sides. And then this is like a bus bar here, a ground bar. Uh, that's going to be all your grounds as well. So I've got the lights and the radio hooked up. And then this is a keyed source. So if you want it tied to the key where the inverter only comes on with the key, then by all means, you can turn this to a switchable source. Right now, I've just got it tied to power. So as long as we have power, the inverter is actually going to be working. I'll change that once I know that we have a keyed source 
But for now, as far as getting everything working and running, I want to make sure I have power to it all the time. So a few zip ties to clean things up a little bit, get everything routed kind of in a better manner. I know we could do some wire loom if we wanted to. But anyway, I think it's clean enough. Uh, let's go ahead and do a shakedown on this thing. And we'll find the keyed source and tie it to this, uh, this little red wire right there. And then everything will be under key. But as far as runnability, we're good to go. So we'll take a little drive here. Uh, but just wanted to talk about uh, the light time battery. So basically you can get the 36 volt, 100 amp hour battery, which is the ones we put in here. We got two of them in here, uh, but you can get them each for about 800 bucks or you can save a little money if you get a two pack and I believe you get them for like 1550. Um, so it is a little, a little investment, uh, but you're getting tons more run time getting a ton of power uh, out of the gate, and then you're gonna get, gain a little top speed too. We'll run the GPS speedometer here in just one moment, but uh, let's get down this dirt road and get on some pavement. So we'll do from a dead stop here. It's a great pickup. Now top speed, I think we got around 17 and a half miles per hour. Uh, so nothing blistering fast, but uh, a good gain, a good few mile an hour gain from the, uh, from the lead acid. And again, your run time is gonna be a lot better now I do wish I do wish it had some sort of status charge status uh, display or something we could we could put on the dash so we could know the status of the charge of the battery but that's something we could easily add another time as an accessory just wish they would add it as a kind of a pack if you will uh, but charging is a breeze uh, just plug in your 120 outlet and it's going to charge the battery and whether you've got one or two batteries it should handle it very easily so check it out from Lie Time. Also keep track of us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and even TikTok. Hey, if you don't mind, hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Have a great day. Keep smiling.